Welcome to Transforming Human Consciousness. I am Kayvon Geola, and this program is sponsored by the Spiritual Assembly of the Baha'is of Claremont. The purpose of transforming human consciousness is based on the Baha'i principle that there is but one human race, we all live on one planet, and we are all brothers and sisters of one another. That is a principle, but in order to bring it into a reality, it seems like we have some ways to go. From some of us, the perspective is that we are there. Some of us feel that, no, we have a long ways to go. And um, the purpose of this dialogue is to explore and see where are we and somewhere in the middle and benefit from each other's consciousness and views. And um, I feel very fortunate to have two wonderful young students here with me, Ruhia Yul, who is a student from um, Redland University. Ruhia is a sophomore, yes. that's correct. And then Justin Yule, her brother, who is a senior at um, Monrovia High School. Yes. Justin is a football player, an yes. athlete. I know we've seen Justin, your picture, many times in the LA Times, in any places. And also um, an honor student, a candidate for Harvard University, mm -hmm. being recruited right now, and all these universities fighting over Justin which is a pleasure having you here. And Thanks. both of you, members of the Baha'i community in Monrovia. Actually, right now you're in Yeah, Redland. kind of transitional. You're in transition to Redland. Um, I would like to explore some of these issues because in, as young people, you live in the community, you are in the school. How it is for a um, student, an African-American student, to live in this and day and age in Southern California in the schools, considering that um, some people feel, uh, well, we're doing fine, you know, how, why are we making such a big deal out of this issue of racism? What would you say? Justin? Well, as a, growing up as a Baha'i and in a very diverse community like Morovia, uh, I feel that I was very protected growing up uh, through elementary school, throughout junior high school, and throughout my high school years, I've always uh, been around a diverse group of people. However, when I leave Monrovia, <clears throat> uh, it's sometimes a rude awakening. Uh, many other places find uh, diversity frightening, and 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 they they are even sometimes defenseful when they see it. So it's it's sometimes hard. I feel very privileged that I was uh, in a diverse community, but when you leave. Mm -hmm. your your area sometimes it's very difficult to uh to see these types of things going on such as racism and prejudice what do you mean by um, sometimes when you leave it's not the same for example uh very recently i was at a basketball game uh where monrovia played one of the schools in our league and uh the a fight was getting ready to happen I decided, you know, since I am Baha'i and uh, I do not let these types of things happen, if I know, know of them, I decided that I would try and, you know, break it up to try and stop the problem before it started. And in my efforts, uh, I ended up being the only one uh, taken in by the police and put into the police car mm -hmm. because I was trying to stop a fight, trying to uh, stop a potential large problem because there is a gym full of about 300 students and if a fight would have broken out m more fights would have started mm -hmm. so in, in trying to stop one fight I got myself into a lot of trouble with uh, police officers I mean I was cursed at by the police officers um, they they slammed me up against the wall with, they they whipped out their billy clubs and mace um, ready to use them at mm -hmm. at any time um, they hit me in the chest with a uh, a uh, flashlight and I was thrown into the back of a police car just for trying to break up a fight even though many other people from Morovia told them that I that that I had just been trying to break up the fight um, so that is just one example if if you leave when I left my community that was that's very sheltered and which I feel very sheltered and protected in it's sometimes rude awakening but it, it could be like that in many other places also. Justin, do you, um, you say you're sheltered, but I know that also you are, 
Mm, you travel abroad, you are active in the community, you are a athlete, um, your family is very active. So you're not sheltered in the sense of not you know, being outside of your home. Right, I just don't experience racism as much as uh, many other people in America do. So do you think this was racism, mm, what you experienced, the police um, grabbing you and shoving you around? and? Um, yes, it was all a racial issue. Um, when I was breaking up the fight, there were many other people around. Um, they could have grabbed any number of people, white, black, Hispanic, but for some reason, they chose just to grab me, mm. the, the closest black male around. Mm. I really believe that this was a racially, um, it, it was a racial issue. Mm. And, and so, so you were taken, you were put in the, in the police car. Um, were you, did you stay there? Did you, what, what happened after that? I stayed in the police car for about a half an hour. Um, no contact with anyone. It took about 10 to 20 minutes before anyone else was brought outside that was involved in this altercation. Um, the people that were about to fight were not even questioned. Uh, for about a good 10 to 20 minutes, I was the only mm -hmm. one. Mm -hmm. And when my the, the other boy from Monrovia came out, who was also black, he was attended to by the police officers. However, the boy that started the fight, or or uh, provoked it, provoked the fight. Right. Mm -hmm. um, he was only dealt with by a, a school official, the principal. Mm -hmm. He was known. He was a known. Uh, Troublemaker? Mm -hmm. He had been arrested. I found out a little later that he had been arrested the week before. Mm -hmm. But still, the people that were uh, not not arrested, but they were the police attended to him mm -hmm. were the two black males mm -hmm. and the one that was allowed to just basically do what he wanted to because he walked around and cursed mm -hmm. at the police officers was the white male. Mm -hmm. um, how did you? Um, I know that there were some um, coaches from Monrovia there? Mm-hmm. I eventually, that's how I eventually got out of the police car. They eventually co convinced the two officers that I, that I was not a troublemaker, that I was not <clears throat> trying to, you know, start a fight, but trying to break it up. Mm -hmm. And after a while of them trying to convince them of this, they eventually let me out of the car, and then they proceeded to say that they deal with people like me all the time, people who are in and out of the system. They just made this assumption from, from the way I look. Mm -hmm. they, they didn't know me from anyone else, mm -hmm. but they assumed that they knew exactly what I was about and what, what I got, what I get into and what I do and things like that. And, and it was kind of disheartening to hear that because, like you said, I, I, I do pretty well in school, do pretty well on the football field, but still, because of my skin color, they thought I was a criminal. Mm -hmm. They thought that I was in and out of jail and things like that. Mm -hmm. So another, it's kind of disheartening. Another interesting point in this whole story is that Justin wasn't by himself in this incident. No, there was many different officials from the school trying to help him the whole time. Mm -hmm. But there was one key issue. They were all black, most of them black males. And from the minute that Justin was apprehended by the police officers, a black male, a coach dressed in a full suit, came to his rescue and said to the police officer, look, he's a, you know, he's a student from our school. He didn't do anything. I can vouch for him. No. He was told to shut up, get out of his face. Another black male came out of, the, uh, out of the stands when he saw the police officer bringing out Mace to handle Justin, who was just trying to stop a fight, and was saying, you know, no, he didn't do anything, he didn't do anything. He was handled, manhandled by the police officers. Justin wasn't let out of the police car until two white males from, the, from, our, from our high school came up and said, no, you've got the wrong person. When white people came to his rescue, finally it was like, there's something wrong. And this whole time before any fight started, another black female um, administrator from our high school had gone to the officials at the other high school and said, there's a guy back there, he's kicking our girls. What he, what he, what he had done was he had hit a female, mm -hmm. a female cheerleader. And she had complained numerous times. Mm -hmm. And, and the, you know, the other administrators at the other school completely ignored her. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's the important issue, is that because there were all these black faces, there was nothing done. Mm -hmm. You know, this was a... This, an, this um, event was allowed to escalate to something that it didn't have mm -hmm. to be in. It really didn't have to. Uh, it, you know, one of the things that um, for, mm, for any of us who haven't had an experience like that is the question is, how, uh, what would I be 
thinking and feeling in the moment like that? What goes through one's heart and mind when put in a situation like that? Well, if you've never been in that type of situation, uh, this is how it happens. It happens so quickly that there's no really time, there's no time to consult with anyone or to do any deep thought. It's just reaction. Mm -hmm. uh, when I saw my friend get up to go see what was happening over there, and, and then I saw the, the, their tempers rising in the situation, maybe getting violent. I just instantly got up, go over there, try and calm it down. Didn't really think of the uh, repercussions of what could happen to me. Mm -hmm. I wasn't thinking of, uh, we're the only two black males over here, we're gonna be taken into, the, into police custody. Mm -hmm. I wasn't thinking of any of that. I was just thinking of trying to stop something before it started. Um, because of this situation, it makes me feel like sometimes that I can't get involved in anything because before I know where I'm at, uh, who's around, and all this type of things. And when, if you do all this types of, type of thinking mm -hmm. before an uh, incident like this is, is occurring or is about to occur, then it's already happened by the time you've worked out the whole situation in your mind. Mm -hmm. So it, it kind of makes you feel like you don't want to get involved in anything because of what could happen to you. Right. You don't want to come to anyone else's aid to assist them at all because you're afraid of what it could, you know, what could happen to you. And what is what a what a powerful but mm, tragic conclusion that one has to make in that kind of a situation mm -hmm. as a human being. Um, Justin, um, let's go ahead and take a break, um, and then come back. We'd like to discuss and see what is it that mm, we can do or you feel like you can do. And from Ruhia also, and for our audience, I would like to ask you to please stay tuned, and we shall be back. CPAT Channel Three. CPAT. Yes. <laughs> what station am I on? CPTA. <laughs> Where's the cue card? <laughs> Hi, I'm Michael Duke with CPAT. I got it right. This is Sherry Belafonte saying, "Watch CPAT Channel 3. Did I get it right? <laughs> well, welcome back to Transforming Human Consciousness. We're going to continue our conversation with Ruhia Yule and Justin Yule, two students, one from Monrovia High School, Justin is a senior, and Ruhia, a student at Redland University. We are discussing, exploring the experience of um, students and youth in our communities as to the issue of racism. Are we overdoing it to talk about it? Are we really attending to something which is valuable, which is important? Is this doing a service? Is this helping our communities by discussing it, bringing it in the open? What do you think, Justin? Yeah, really doing the community service because I think many people feel that racism is not a large or big issue anymore, mm -hmm. uh, when in reality it, it still is. I think there needs to be some type of programs in the schools, uh, maybe that talk about racism and diversity, uh, maybe some programs that police officers and school administration go through so that they <clears throat> know how to deal with racial issues, racial tension, and, and, and those type of situations so that if anyone else is ever put in a situation like I was, where it's a, it's a large racial issue that's very tense, it can be dealt with a little easier without uh, people being hurt, feelings being hurt, and that type of thing. Justin, what would you, what would you have liked to see? Um, what would have been acceptable to you the way they, this whole thing would have been handled? <clears throat> I understand that, that police officers, they have a job to do also in that situation. It might have been the best thing for them just to take everyone or the nearest people out and then to sort it out later. But they didn't have to approach me in the way that they did. They cursed and pushed and grabbed and, and pulled out the billy clubs and the mace as I, like I was a criminal and like I was going to do something and, and try to defend myself and hurt them. Um, if they would just have been more civil, uh, and kind, you know, treated me like a person uh, of good merits instead of a, a criminal. Uh, it would have made the situation a lot less, I don't know, it would just made it easier for me to deal with it all after. Mm -hmm. not, not that's painful. Yeah. 
I think what we all tend to forget as Americans is that racism has really, racism, prejudice, and discrimination has made our country. It is an integral part of every strata of society. So we can sit idly by it, and like I do, like I've forgotten many times, and say, oh, racism doesn't exist. That was a thing for the civil rights movement. That was a struggle for my parents and my parents' parents to fight. No, it has created everything that we live in, and we forget that many times. So I think that studying it, recognizing that America has flourished, built, was built upon, and thrives upon racism is an, in is an, is an interesting thing and an essential component to recognize and then begin to eradicate because we can see that we're, we're just going downward. We're not going anywhere further. Mm -hmm. let's, let's, uh, let's go back to this issue. For example, this incident happened this past week, right? Something yeah. like that. Yes. Um, Justin, what would you like to see your school do or your community do in this relation um, that would be healing to you? Well, I think that our school and the school that in which it happened with should probably try to get together and do some race issues together mm -hmm. because this is not the first time this type of issue has happened between these two schools. Maybe if we, at this level, try to work it out between schools, then <clears throat> it, it'll grow and th then Monrovia will do another school, and another school, another school, and, and it'll be a, a growing process and, and maybe hopefully it'll touch every school in this area. Mm -hmm. And I mean, if that help happens, then we're helping end racism. If if uh, if we start programs, you know, to deal with racial tension, like I said earlier, I think that it would be of immense help to the students at the high school level, junior high school, and all the way down, and also to the police stations and to the administrations. It'll help them be able to deal with a lot of different types of students, mm -hmm. and which will in turn just help the school in general and the communities in general. You don't have, mm, you don't perceive that you would have something like this happening in Monrovia to you, would you? Well, Monrovia at this time uh, has some, some uh, um, community things going on that help mm -hmm. um, try and eradicate racism. We have a Children's Peace Conference and, and things like that. The Children's That's Peace something Conference. put up by the Baha'i community. Yeah, the it? Children's Peace Conference was put on this year by the Baha'is in Monrovia. Um, it, it, it deals with younger children, you know, children from kindergarten all the way up to the high school age, um, ages, and talks about racism and racial issues. Mm -hmm. um, so Monrovia does deal with it and, 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 and allows students to talk very openly about it, but I, but I think it should be done probably more in the schools more. Yeah, because it just, it's just a matter of time. A lot of schools, and what we're dealing with at our university now is kind of the apathy. Oh, it's not a problem. There's no racial issues. There's no racial tension. But it's just a matter of time before somebody truly speaks their mind. What we're living in America today is a society that doesn't really want to speak their mind. They view you one way. They have these prejudices about you. But because it's not politically correct or because it's not okay to say it anymore, they'll just kind of harbor it inside. And then it builds up and builds up and builds up, and then it explodes. And you don't know where <laughs> it's come from in an incident like this. So All I right. think that every school system, regardless if you're having racial tensions, regardless if you have diversity, diversity is a reality in the world that we all need to deal with. So, in, you know, classes on, on um, dealing with all kinds of diversity from all over. Monrovia, you know, it's a, it's a community that celebrates diversity. You know, little kids learn about all different peoples from the beginning, you know, from the time you're in kindergarten. So if you start these in educational programs, if you start dialogues with your communities, I think the, the issues won't have to come to a head. You won't have to have a volcan volcano erupt before you go into the police systems. It can be, you know, kind of... Um, Justin, I remember you, mm, you said something which was very striking to me. You said, mm, I do not know whether I'm supposed to, from now on, give up the whole idea of going to the help of other people when I'm in a situation, um, or I should um, still risk mm, myself and my life and still not think and go and help. Have you made any conclusions on that? Well, it's a the decision that was made in that situation is basically instinct. And I think uh, it was my instinct, and I think if I was put in a similar situation, I might react differently. But now that I know the possibilities of what could happen, um, I might be hesitant 
So I think what I've decided to do is I've decided to just pick and choose the situations I want to get involved in. Um, it might make me uh, stay out of a situation like that next time. Uh, so you won't go help someone? No, I'm, I don't want to say that because I know that I will. I would, if I see someone that need, needs help, I most likely I'm going to help them. But I think you still need to pick and choose. You don't need to get yourself into a situation that you can't stop. Mm -hmm. If you can stop it before it happens, if I could have stopped the boy before he went over to the other side of the gym to try, you know, to try and start the fight, I would put myself in a better situation. If I could have stopped him on uh, when he was sitting down, mm -hmm. uh, maybe get involved a little earlier. Um, what you need to do is just pick and choose what, what, what type of situation you want to get involved in mm -hmm. and what type of situation you think you can handle personally. Um, another scenario is I could have went to, a, to one of the security guards or one of the school administrators and said, uh, there's something getting ready to happen. I mean, that might have been too late. It could have already erupted by that time, but that's just another, that could have been one of my options. So you don't always have to get into it directly. Mm -hmm. You can maybe take, choose different avenues mm -hmm. to try and help solve the problem. Somehow it seems to me like what you're really saying is just saying that um, too bad that I can't be spontaneous about being um, mm -hmm. a good Samaritan. I almost have to now, before I get, jump into any situation, I have to first think about where I'm at, uh, what race is predominantly in this community that I'm in right now. Mm -hmm. I can't just help someone because they need help. Mm -hmm. All these other factors now hinder, you know, me making a decision. Right. And, and in that, that time where I'm thinking where I'm at and all this, the problem is just escalating and escalating and escalating. And that's the true injustice, that mm -hmm. now as human beings in society, we have to now think about where we are before we help our fellow man. Um, I think that what needs to be done is that we need to somehow come up with ideas, using, utilizing some of the ideas that Justin has said about coming together as a community, as a world, so that we don't have to think about, ooh, you know, is this a predominantly white community? Can I not help that person who's going to get in the fight? Can I not stop a situation? And that's the true injustice, that we have to think about where we are to help someone. I, 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 I see what you're saying. The, to, mm, to look at ourselves, the, one of the uh, honors of being a human being is to reach out exactly. and practice mm -hmm. the oneness of humanity and having to be deprived yourself of that chance and having a society which would be deprived of the gift that you can give it I can see how what you mean when you say that's the greatest injustice especially as Baha'is because we believe so deeply I mean that's the root of our faith is the oneness of humanity and to have to actually now you know think about mm -hmm who I am is very contrary to how I believe and how I think. And it's very hard for Justin and I, both of us, mm -hmm. to be forced to take those positions because it's not something that we believe in at all. And I don't mm -hmm. think it's something that society should have to do either. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I hope that your efforts and your vigor and your energy will um, take care of at least some chip somewhat at this whole big monster that we have, racism. And uh, I thank you so much for coming and sharing, and um, thank you for your contribution. And uh, for the Baha'is of Claremont, I would like to ask uh, our audience, thank you for being with us, for transforming human consciousness also. If there are any questions, any comments, please contact us through PO Box 686, Claremont, California, 91711. Thank you for being with us. Thank you.